You see a lot of injuries that, that really would impact range of motion of all of the digits. And so those docs won't composite range of motion, so that's what we've been trying to learn. Okay, so go ahead and show me full fist. Okay, so we said with measuring the M piece, um, well actually go ahead and let's do one extension. You got some micro extension. Yeah. So what do you see of the M piece? She's got hyper extension. Mm -hmm. What about the eye piece? Mm -hmm. Hyper extension. Mm -hmm. Okay. And probably a little bit at the deep piece, but not so not, dramatic. Not. But she, but clearly she can she can extend to neutral, right? So in this case, I would probably just put zeros, and I would note, you know, I mean, I would put in my in my narrative that um, you know the patient could extend at all joints to zero, and in fact, you know, demonstrated some hypermobility. Actually, she could hyper extend. Um, which was most notable at the MPs and IPs, okay? Um, but again, if we have something like that, you know, a swan neck deformity, um, that we would need to actually measure. Um, it wasn't this group that had the person that had like really, that I said we actually took the goniometer over the back because it was that marked. Who was that? Okay. I have to think, we might have to figure out and get that person in video. Okay, so go ahead and show me your fist again. So, in piece, you can go over the top. Um, if I'm here on the small finger, you know, not a big deal, okay? But if we're on the mm -hmm. index or, or middle finger, mm -hmm. if you're going to use the over the top method, I would come like off to the side. So let's just see what difference we're getting here. Um, so this is about 74, okay? If I come off to the side, I'm over the top here, and I got 70. So that's only about four different. But what we had kind of said as a rule of thumb is that most of the time the range of motion is higher when we're going over the top. So that's what we saw. And so sometimes people have just been using this to check themselves. They go over the top because that's like super easy, right? And then they'll, you know, come off to the side or use the silhouette method, you know, of, of, of lining up the, the silhouette or the edge of the, the hand and finger with the black lines here and they'll kind of use that as a as, <clears throat> as a check you know they figure as long as they're getting about the same or say maybe five degrees less um, compared to measuring over the top then they know that that's kind of their template of doing pretty good on that okay so in the clinic I would I would I would take a survey of, of my extension if I needed to measure extension on any or all the fingers because again our clients in the clinic are not coming to us because they have full range of motion in their hands. If they did, would you be measuring them? Not unless it's a comparing the, you know, comparing, so, so you have one hand that's injured and has severely limited range of motion, you measure the other hand so that you'll have uh, your comparison, right? But uh, if, if people have full range of motion in both their hands, then we would just say they have full range of motion in their, in their digits. Um, okay. But I would, I would record or take note of all my extensions first, and then if I were measuring all four digits, I would measure all the way across and measure all of my MPs and record those and then measure all my IPs and then measure all my DPs. Okay. So we can go over the top with um, with PIPs. Okay. So going over the top here, is this gonna be more or less than ninety? Less. More. 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 I'm sorry. Okay. PIPs it's more. On most people who have full range of motion is going to be more than 90 and it's not not even like 95 I mean many 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 of us are going to have 105 110 even the occasional more than that so like in this case my choices would have been 80 versus 110 110, 110. okay so let's see if I go if I go silhouette with the black lines I've got about 107 if I go like right over the top and kind of try to center right over the bones, I got 105. Okay, all righty. And then in the case of the DP on the index finger, for her I could still pretty much go, go over the top, just try not to pinch that uh, skin from her web space, but I could still go over the top. Some people can't get their thumb out of the way quite that well. Okay, so more or less than 90 at the DP? Yes. Less. less. Okay, 
So I got 60. Okay. Um, and, and if I go, yeah, still same, about 60. Okay. So sometimes you might have to kind of get them to, to move their thumb out of the way for you, or you might not be able to get directly on them. You may have to kind of kind of eyeball it from a slight distance. Um, or we could use this, which we're not using except for the DPs because we were coming off, in some cases, 10 or 15 degrees off, so um, not a good tool for us here. Okay, but here, let's see. So I'm not going to look at the numbers until I'm, okay. So I got 50, about 56 using this. But this is our way that we could, you know, we could measure over the top and get our MPs and our IPs um, with our cutoff goniometer. But if we wanted to get our DPs and still do our composite measures, um, we can come in here and use this. And so like in this one, I've got like about 76, which looking, I mean, it does look I mean, it almost looks deceptively close to 90, so so 76, we're not going to be scared by that number, even though this one was only 60. Okay? So, I think we have it. Okay. So, I just wanted to show you this this hyperextension. Um, I don't know if this, can you see this angle back, right? Okay. So, you see how hyperextended, especially these two are? We actually were able to come over the, the back here and measure almost like we were measuring flexion. So, she's got... She's got well over 30 degrees of hyperextension there. We've got 30, yeah, like 38, 38 hyperextension at this middle finger IP. And then here at the index finger, it's about 30, 32. So we'll try to get a couple of different angles here so that you can see. So something like this you would want to actually measure with that much hyperextension. Okay, and then we want to show you snuff box really quickly. Please. Okay. All right. Thank you, ma'am. Snuff box. Snuff box. Okay. Okay, so we're in a good angle here. Okay, so this area here is where people um, have dipped snuff or sniff snuff from. So this would be here your tendons that are kind of like your de Quervain's tendon, so to speak. So this would be your um, um, abductor pollicis longus and your extensor pollicis brevis. And then this would be your extensor pollicis longus over here. So she's got a really nice prominent snuff box that we can see. Okay. All right. Thank you.